So we can start. In fact, it's already two minutes past eight. So. Uh, today who will read? Archana Ji, can you read? Yes, Rangada. Just let me see the page. Yeah, yeah. Take your time. 593. Here, let's observe first that by this passivity in ourselves, we arrive from particular and broken knowledge at a greater, a one and a unifying knowledge. Secondly, that if in the state of passivity, we open ourselves entirely to what is beyond, we can become aware of a power acting upon us, which we feel to be not our own in the limited egoistic sense, but universal or transcendent, transcendental, and that this power works through us for a greater play of knowledge, a greater play of energy, action, and result, which also we feel to be not our own, but that of the divine of Sachidanan, ourselves only its field or channel. The result happens in both cases because our individual consciousness rests from an ignorant, limited action and opens itself to the supreme status or to the supreme action. In the latter, the more dynamic opening, there is power and play of knowledge and action, and that is tapas. But in the formal or formal also, in the static consciousness, there is evidently a power for knowledge and a concentration of knowledge, or at least a concentration of consciousness in immobility and a self-realization. And that too is tapas. Therefore, it would seem that tapas, concentration of power of consciousness, is the character of both the passive and the active consciousness of Brahman. And that our own passivity also has a certain character of an unseen supporting or instrumentalizing tapas. It is a concentration of energy of consciousness that sustains while it lasts all creation, all action and kindness. But it is, it is also a concentration of power of consciousness that supports inwardly or informs all status, even the most immobile passivity, even an infinite stillness or an eternal silence. A very interesting para. He is trying to find out the, why the ignorance is coming. So now, before we start reading this one, we will connect it to the, what we have said earlier in the previous chapter, uh, previous para. So, I'll read out the summary of the previous para and then you will see what you say. You remember he has said that uh, in the highest level and in the lower level at our level, there is a voluntary, many things in the physical world, we have got voluntary, I want to drink water, voluntary. But the thirst that comes to you is not voluntary. It comes by involuntary methods. Okay? So sleep comes by involuntary. You don't decide that you want to sleep. Okay? So there are many things in human beings where there is involuntary. In other words, when the involuntary is there, it suggests that there is a power behind urging these things in us. Okay? I am not deciding to sleep. I am being forced to sleep. So there is something outside me, involuntary, which is guiding me. So this is a very important point, because this is also related to ignorance and knowledge. When you are uh, doing something voluntarily, it is, you can say knowledge, but when you are doing something involuntarily, it is it's ignorance. We don't know from where it is coming. So the uh, whole chapter of ignorance and knowledge, he is making this distinction. Okay. So I just read out the previous summary of the previous uh, paragraph and then we'll continue. Very uh, detailed, you have to go very carefully, you have to imagine what he's saying and then we'll understand what he's saying. He's trying to find the origin of ignorance. Where is the ignorance coming from? Because everything is divine. On the one hand, you are saying, right from the top to the bottom, you only have Advaita. And if the divine is there everywhere, how can ignorance come into divine? That's what he's trying to find out. Okay, so I read the summary of what he said earlier. The summary in my own words. Huh? Now, a question arises in existence, subtlest substance, and also in nature, there is a passivity as well as an activity. We know that there is Purusha and Prakriti. 
Purusha is consciousness and passive, and Prakriti is, in a certain sense, unconscious and active. There is passivity and activity, but this passivity and activity are relative. They go on everywhere. For instance, in in matter, there seems to be passivity, but actually there is activity. At the highest level, there uh, is a, there is a passivity, but activity is hidden in it. Okay, so that's what works. <coughs> so there is. Passivity as well as activity in existence, also in nature. Existence means at the highest level. Okay, both are there. Status and dynamism, static condition and dynamism. Since we are looking at force, we may ask, what is force doing in these states? In the highest level, force is not acting. So what is it doing? And in the lowest, it is acting like anything, and consciousness is hidden. So we can ask, what is consciousness doing in matter, and what is force doing in the superconscious? We can ask. So in one, it is creative movement; in the other, it is resting without movement. So this is what he is saying. In one, that means at the physical level, in nature, it is creating. Nature is going on creating. Plants, animals, events, okay, going on creating men. In the other, it is resting without movement. In the other, in the higher levels, outside, in the existence, in the supreme Satchidananda, power is resting without movement. Very clear, na? Huh? So, passivity and activity are both states of shakti. Oh, yes, man is joined. Good morning, yes, man. So passivity and yeah, also so passivity and activity are both states of shakti. Okay, shakti power can be passive and it can also be active. And tapas is in action or at rest. Tapas is in, you can use the word tapas also. It is either moving or it is not moving. Okay. When we look into ourselves psychologically at our level, all our actions we associate with force and movement. Isn't it very obvious? There is force and movement. That's why I am moving and acting, whether objective in the external world or psychologically subjective. This is the thing. There is if there is movement, we say it is passive, and if there is um, if there is movement, we sorry, we we say it is active. And if there is no movement, we say it is passive. But force is there everywhere. You can use the word tapas also. Tapas is concentration of force, whether objective in the in the external world or psychologically subjective. This force, mobile in us, produces action. And the force at rest does not end in action. It is immobile. Okay? But force at rest. May be producing action. Just one second. Yeah. When we look at also that we have done, but force at rest may be producing action which is involuntary. Okay, so we think that force is not acting, but it is involuntary. It is working behind the scene. I have given examples: the heart beats. It is involuntary. Blood circulation involuntary. Sleep, walking. Sometimes when you're walking, also it is involuntary. Okay, we are not thinking that I have to take each step. Walking is a little voluntary and involuntary also. All the muscles that are coordinating to make you walk. That's the interesting part. We feel that walking is very natural. It is not. Okay, there is a whole combination of muscles that allow you to walk. Sometimes you suddenly see that you are not being able to walk in spite of wanting. It happened to somebody recently, not recently, about five six years ago. <clears throat> This person was coming to the ashram, and um, she, there's a beginning of Parkinson's she had, and suddenly she found that she is not being able to walk. Okay, so walking is voluntary as well as involuntary because there's a whole combination of muscles that allow you to walk. 
if you have got a, a pain in the back, you will see how walking is difficult. So that means that these muscles are all helping you involuntarily. Okay, involuntary body movements. Okay, that also is there. Twitchings. Okay, mm. some people twitch their nose. Some people have uh, even the body sometimes goes on acting in different ways. Some people go on shaking their legs. Okay, so all sorts of things, body actions. Okay, physical, mechanical habits. Okay, these also could be there. Breathing also is involuntary. In other words, there is a force which is creating all these things, and they are not conscious of it. Okay. Could these involuntary movements be originating from a passive force or perhaps a negative tapas? He is asking a question. Okay. Or again, it could be that a universal force is causing all movements in the individual being, including mind and body. These are the questions he is asking. He will answer, of course, everything. But they are all related to ignorance because we don't know. Involuntary effects in the body are we are ignorant of them. We see also that in nature, all that seems stable and static is actually maintained in existence by unceasing movement. This also is very clear. Okay, first is atomic whirlings in matter. Then even if you look at a tree. You will feel that it is not moving, but it is growing. It is growing in a very, very slow manner. For instance, the blossoming of a flower. Okay, if you look at it, you will see that already. It is static. Actually, it is not static. It is moving, but a very, very slow movement. That's what Sir Nir mentioned. And that movement can be made very, very apparent by what is called time lapse photography. That proves that there is movement. When the flower is taking two hours to come to bloom. You go on photographing it every one minute, one minute, one minute, and you can reduce that time of two hours to three, four minutes, and then you will see how it is moving. And so this is what he is saying. We also see that in nature, all that seems stable and static is actually maintained by in existence by unceasing movement. For instance, we also feel that the ground is not moving, okay, but it is moving. We know these tectonic plates okay, are constantly moving at a very slow level, uh, very slow pace. They say sometimes what uh, five centimeters in one century, and then that is what creates earthquakes and also mountains that come up. So, so many things are involuntary and we don't see them, but there is a force acting all the time. That's what he said. Next, he says, then there is also the individual consciousness. That can enter a state where all action, mental, vital, and physical, ceases completely. This is referring to the experience of the self. When you are, everything ceases completely. Even physically, you don't feel like moving. There is then a movement of tapas, creative energy, throwing up knowledge and activity out of itself, and another, a static poise of force. Where tapas seems to be passive, does all this correspond to anything real in such an ananda? Spiritual experience confirms the dual state of the Brahman, static and dynamic, saguna and nirguna. When you go to the higher levels of consciousness, spiritual experience, you see that yes, there is a force at rest and there is a force at work. Chit shakti, saguna nirguna. You can also say Purusha Prakriti. This is what he said in the previous paragraph. Now we have we read today what we read today. We will look at what he said. Just one second. Now <clears throat> I read each sentence which we read today. Here, let us observe first that by this passivity in our sense, we arrive from particular and broken knowledge. At a greater, a one and unifying knowledge. What is he referring to? This passivity in ourselves. He is referring to the experience of the self, because it becomes passive. When we are normally at our um, normal consciousness of the level one, we don't see any passivity in ourselves. Passivity means absolute stillness. We don't. Okay? We arrive at particular and broken knowledge at a greater. A one and unifying knowledge. 
when you go to the self in level 2 you get are greater knowledge you start seeing the oneness of things this is of very clearly a one and unifying knowledge very broken the many that you see in the physical world the multiplicity is surpassed in the self you see the oneness of things more than the multiplicity secondly that is in the state of passivity so they are mentioning but he talking about the self we open ourselves entirely to what is beyond that means level 3 okay? we can become aware of a power acting upon us which we feel to be not our own in the limited egoistic sense but universal or transcendental and that this power works through us for a greater play of knowledge a greater play of energy action and result which also we feel to be not our own but that of the divine of satchidananda ourselves only its field or channel so what he is referring to here is very clearly he is saying that when you go to the self one of the results of this experience of the self is that you know that you are not the doer of things okay you are not the doer the doer is nature so that's what he is saying okay you realize that you are not doing anything the power is not there yours the power is there in nature and that is doing everything okay so you become aware of that <clears throat> so let's read the sentence again very carefully we will see we can become aware of a power acting upon us which we feel to be not our own in the limited egoistic sense but universal or transcendent so he is mentioning both universal and transcendent normally when you go to this experience of the self you feel that are i am not acting i am absolutely calm and quiet and still my body my mind they are all working so who is making it work you realize there is universal nature you are not the doer universal nature is the doer but this feeling of force can be at a universal level which is nature and if you go slightly higher up at the third level or even higher up okay higher in the level 2 because there are several layers na huh? higher mind eleven mind into the mind over mind so when you go there also in level 2 only you rise higher you realize that there is a divine power it's not only nature but the divine that is acting through nature on me okay that's what you feel you remember we have discussed this many times the divine does not work directly in the world he works through nature nature is the assistant manager <laughs> okay so this is what he said very clearly here too these are basic ideas which you must have very clearly in your mind okay. so nature so but when you go to the level 2 self you realize that nature is active but if you go slightly higher up also you see are it is not only nature but it is divine acting through nature on me okay that's what he is saying okay because he is using two words remember universal or transcendent so transcendent corresponds to the divine and universal corresponds to nature okay that this power works through us for a greater play of knowledge this power which is there is now although it seems to be passive but it is giving me more knowledge than when i was in the physical world okay? a greater play of energy also Spiritually, when you go to the higher levels of consciousness, the amount of energy you get is fantastic. Okay, mother and son both slept only for two hours. They didn't even sleep; they just rested. The body was resting, but the rest of them is still working. So, if they use the whole night, he used to write letters. Okay, he used to be awake, and people used to he used to have a cup of tea <laughs> in the night, and then he used to go on writing letters. And at six o'clock only in the morning he would stop, okay, and then he would have a little rest, and then have a bath, and then breakfast. So <clears throat> there is an the energy that he is talking about. Not only really you get more knowledge, but you also get great energy, action, and result, which also we feel to be not our own. Ah, there you are. Now we are coming back to the <clears throat> the idea in the Gita, nishkama karma, the you must give up the desire for the fruit of actions 
karma phalam you have to that's not mind it is the divine the phala is for the divine all i have to do is the karma i am only a puppet but the result of the my action is that of the divine it belongs to the divine not to me again that idea also is coming up. you can see how everything is gelling into a very very composite understanding of things okay but that of the divine okay so what is saying very clearly action and result which also we feel to be not our own but that of the divine of sachidanand ourselves only its field or action we are a channel we are a and field or channel we are a channel in the divine is acting through nature and nature is acting through in us so the divine is actually behind the <laughs> you can say three phase uh, three phase uh, so three stage action the divine is originating the action but is using nature and nature is using its force and acting on us <laughs> so whether it is nature or universal uh, or uh, transcendental the result happens i am reading the next sentence the result happens in both cases because our individual consciousness rests from an ignorant limited action and opens itself to a supreme status or to the supreme action so when you go to the higher level your consciousness is absolutely static but your action is in increasing like anything okay so that's what he's saying in the latter the more dynamic opening there is power and play of knowledge and action in the latter he is talking of the nature in the former is the transcendent okay in the latter the more dynamic opening there is power and play of knowledge and action and that is tapas tapas is concentration of force but in the former also in the static consciousness there is evidently a power for knowledge and a concentration of knowledge or at least a concentration of consciousness in immobility and a self realization and that too is the purpose so the purpose is there everywhere even when force is working in the physical world storms earthquakes okay volcanoes all this is tapas energy at a universal level but when you are absolutely static your individual consciousness is not moving at all that also is tapas tapas but it is resting what is in movement what is not moving therefore it would seem that tapas concentration of power of consciousness is the character of both the passive and the active consciousness of brahman and that our own passivity also has a certain character of an unseen supporting or instrumentalizing tapas there you are just see what i mean by instrumental therefore it would seem that tapas concentration of power of consciousness in is the character of both passive and active consciousness of brahman and that our own passivity passivity of the self also has a certain character of an unseen supporting or instrumentalizing tapas there is a tapas higher up which is using nature it's a concentration of energy of consciousness that sustains while it lasts all creation all action and kinesis the tapas at the highest level is sustaining supporting okay while it lasts all creation why say why it lasts because sometimes when you are in the self there is no action so it lasting you, you see the concentration of energy allowing your movements in the physical world movements movement of mind movement of body and movement of body all action and kinesis and the word kinesis is clear na kinetic means movement action power but it is also a concentration of uh, uh, power of consciousness that supports inwardly and informs all status so in other words the consciousness of the self is not absence of power 
It is power which is sustaining the consciousness. Note the difference, very interesting. Okay. It is like, okay, if somebody gives you a slap, you hit it back. Okay, you hit back. Okay. That means you are reacting and there is power in that. But suppose you are absolutely and fully in control of yourself, even if someone does something to you, even if he gives slap, you are not reacting. So that is passivity. But is there really passivity? Is it absence of power? No. It is not absence of power. It is power control. It is allowing absolutely. That is what Sir Dish said. Okay? So he is saying that the power is there all the time, whether in passivity or in activity. Okay? So, all creation, all action can be. But it is also a concentration of power of consciousness and that supports inwardly and informs all status, even the most immobile passivity, even an infinite stillness or an eternal silence. So, <clears throat> in other words, we have discussed it many times, you can call it Chit and Shakti, you can call it Purusha and Prakriti, you can call it Saguna, Nirguna, but basically it's the same. There is movement and there is consciousness. Okay, so it's power and movement. So you can also think of power and movement. Power in action is in the physical world. Power in non-action, held back, is at the higher level. That's all. So, very interesting what they said. We have got still 10 minutes, so we can read the next one. But still it may be said. So, Yasmin, uh, sorry, uh, Archana, they read. So now next someone has to read. Uh, Sunkri, will you read? Yes, yes, I will read. Yeah, go ahead. But still. But still, yeah. it may be said that these are in the end two different things. And this is shown by their difference of opposite real opposite results. For a result to the passivity of Brahman leads to the cessation of this existence and a result to the active Brahman leads to its continuous. But here too, let us observe that this distinction arises by a movement of an individual soul from one poise to another, from the poise of a Brahman consciousness in the world where it is a fulcrum for the universal action or to, to, or to or towards the poise of a Brahman consciousness beyond the world, where it is a power, a power for the withholding of energy from the universal action. Moreover, if it is by, by energy of tapas that the dispensing of a force of a being in the world action is accomplished, it is equally by the energy of tapas that the drawing back of that force of a being is accomplished. The passive consciousness of a Brahman and its active consciousness are not, not two different, conflicting and incompatible things. They are the same consciousness, the same energy, at one end in a state of self-reservation, at the other, at the other, cast into a motion of self-giving and self-deploying, like the stillness of a reservoir and the coursing of the channels which flow from it. In fact, behind every activity, there is and must be a passive power of being from which it arises, by which it is supported, which even we see in the end governs it from behind without being totally identified with it. In the sense, at least of a being itself, all poured out into the action and indistinguishable from it. Such a self exhausting identification is impossible. For no action, however vast, exhausts the original power from which it proceeds, leaving nothing behind it in reserve. When you get back into our own conscious being, when you stand back from our own action and see how it done, how it is done, we discover that it is our whole being which stands behind any which stands behind any particular act or sum of activities passive in the rest of its integrality, active in its limited dispensation of energy. But that passivity is not an in incapable inertia, 
it is a poise of self-reserved energy. A similar truth must apply still more completely to the conscious being of the infinite, whose power, in silence of status as in creation, must also be infinite. Right. So, I don't think we have time to uh, go through this whole paragraph. We'll do that tomorrow. So, today, just I mentioned a few things very interesting. I just read out the summary of what he's saying, number one. Number two, there is an exhausting identification is impossible that we will discuss briefly. And tomorrow we will do this para again because, as I say, it's interesting to see how he uses words. See, just now we saw that he's not using the word self, but he's talking of passive condition. He means the self. So we have to understand how he uses words. That's the most important thing. So I'm reading out the summary of what he's saying here, and then we'll look at some other aspect. And tomorrow we'll do this again. Okay. Yet, it may be said, this is the summary which I am reading out of what we read just now. Okay? Yet, it may be said that the silence and the dynamics are two contrary principles. We are saying that the same thing, it is power in action and power in non-action. But still, you can say that if you look at the results, they seem to be two different things. In fact, not different, opposite. They are opposite. One is moving and one is not moving. Yet, it may be said, that the silence and the dynamics are two contrary principles, since their results lead to diametrically opposite directions. Passivity denies reality to the world and moves away from it as an illusion. Okay? When you are in the, this is the experience of the ascetic, the Buddhist. Passivity denies reality to the world and moves away from it as an illusion. Activity continues meaningful action in the real world. But we see that both movements start from the individual consciousness of the soul. The individual is the agent through whom the cosmic force acts in the world, whether for action or inaction. So we find that action or inaction are not different things. It is the same force, one withholding itself, and again, the same force deploying itself into extending self-expression. The water behind the dam is a good illustration. This is actually something himself is saying. Huh? He's saying reservoir. He uses the word reservoir and not dam. And the channels. It's a good illustration. It is from the silence that the dynamism is born. Also to be noted is the fact that both are infinite and silence can never exhaust itself by spending its energy outwards. Okay. That's the Brihadaranyaka mantra, which I'll read out after we finish this summary. We also find that when we act, engage ourselves in a limited specific work, it is the totality of our energy which is standing at the back, supports a limited action, which would not have been possible without that infinite support of consciousness, force and ananda. In other words, even when I'm doing a very small work like knocking a nail into the wall, the entire force which is there in me is limiting itself to that particular work. But the force is there behind. That's what he's saying. Okay. Now he's also saying that energy at the lower level and energy at the higher level can never exhaust itself. So that is on the Brihadara and Nika Upanishad. Okay? So I'm just reading out the most of you will probably know it also. Purna Madha Purna Vidam Purnat Purnam Dachyate Purnasya Purna Madhaya Purna Meva Purna Meva Ava Shishyate. So what he's saying is the spirit is infinite and the manifestation also is infinite. The world is infinite and the divine is infinite. The infinite arises from the infinite. Subtract the infinite from the finite. Sorry, subtract the infinite from the infinite. The remainder is the infinite. <laughs> so this is something which is not our mathematics. So this is what he said. Purna Madha, Purna Madha, this. Purna, Purna Madha is Purna, Purna that. Adha is that. And Idam is this. Now, note very interestingly also, I'm making a slight 
they uh, South South Indians like to say that they are Dravidians and they have nothing to do with uh, Sanskrit and all other things. But look at that. Other either, okay, even in Tamil, other is that, and either is this, and in uh, Sanskrit phrase, <laughs> other idam, okay. So, purna mother, purna mudachu, purna 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 mudachu. The infinite comes from the infinite. Subtract the infinite from the infinite, the infinite is the remainder. Okay. So, this is what we say. Very interesting. We got only two minutes. We we'll stop here today. And tomorrow we will do this in detail. Okay. Again, because of the words. Different words are there. So we will do Can I ask you a question? Pardon? Can I ask you a question? You can always ask a question without asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, like the transcendent is like totally white, pure white, unimaginable. Okay. But when the divine comes into the universal, yes. what would be the color of the universal? You are using the word white and color. I will use the form formless and form. So form, uh, um, formlessness is okay, not even that thing. is that is that is one way. Uh -huh. But if one wants to put this down on the paper, uh -huh. then you have to have forms in the universe. Okay. But what would be the color? Now when we look at the universe, we see the stars and we see a black sky. But okay. that is not so. The universe is not totally black. Like in conscience. Absolutely but, not. Uh, so it has a color of its own. So what color would that be? Yasmin, the very fact that nature is money suggests many colors. Don't you see rainbows in the sky? Don't you see the flowers in the hundred thousand colors? So color is there everywhere. No, the I, I am talking of the cosmic consciousness. Okay. So, what would be the color of the cosmic consciousness? I don't. The think universal you consciousness. You are concentrating on color, and I am saying that colorlessness and colorfulness. So, in the universe, there is colorfulness, many, many colors, not only one. And that which is the highest level is colorless, is one, featureless. Yes, accepted. But in the universe, if you want to say paint the consciousness, okay. what background would you have? <laughs> I don't think you can speak of it in that way. The universe doesn't have background color. <laughs> the universe is all foreground. <laughs> Okay, so what would be the foreground color? As I said just now, infinite colors. Okay. Multiplicity. Don't forget the principle of multiplicity. The one becomes the many. And color also can be many. And colorless can be also one. Uh, the question I put is... Um, you are limiting it only to color, but don't limit it only to color. Go to a wider general thing, one and many. Okay. Then you will see that color is only one aspect of it. Color is one aspect, form is one aspect, the features are one aspect. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but when one puts it down on paper, yeah, then. Um, it's difficult how to put it on paper. Of course it is. Because the reality can never be put on paper. That's what exactly being said, no? that the infinite is ineffable. It can't even be put into language, let alone paper. We give examples, yes, but the examples are all imperfect. That is the reason why truth is expressed in symbols. Okay, symbolic images come. To explain to you the truth of things. Okay. 
the truth is ineffable. You can't speak about me. You can't put it into language. It is beyond all language because we are in the many and that truth is the one. So how can the one be expressed in the many? Not possible. Not even language, not even unpaved. Not even unpaved. Ineffable. So it is, the universe is many hued. That's right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Merci Boku. Okay. Au revoir, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.